Want to know what the best book I read in 2023 was? Me too. Let's find out with my book bracket. Hi everyone, it's Kaylee and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna find out what the best book I read in 2023 was. There was a lot. I'm not quite done reading because as I film this, it's uh, December 29th. I have finished reading the full length books. I'm just reading some novellas. Um, I'll probably do a video and talk about this novella series that I found way too late in the year. I don't know how I missed this up until now, but that's for another video. Um, but I don't count novellas in my, um, I count them towards my reading goal, but I haven't been doing um, full video or like um, review videos for them. So I'm probably done doing review videos as of now. I have one more that's going up tomorrow and this one is, this video is hopefully going up the next day. Um, so you should be seeing this on New Year's Eve, I guess. Um, and yeah, so I know all the full length novels. I have already gone through month by month and made a list of what my top book was for each month. And then we're going to do a book bracket and we're going to pair them and see what the best one that I read was. So because there are 12 months, I'm going to do it in groups of three to get down to my top four and then narrow that to my top two and then to my top one. So let's start with my favorite books from January, February, and March. My favorite book in January was X's and O's by Amy Leah. Now this is book two in her influencer series. It is about a bookstagrammer and I believe he's a, um, a fireman and she ends up moving in with him. So there's like a little forced proximity going. I loved it. I ate up the whole thing. The spice was on point. I loved everything about this. I love Amy Leah. I love all of her books. I read them as soon as I can. And yeah, so this one was top for our January book was X's and O's by Amy Leah. For February, it was Just My Type by Fallon Ballard. And this one was a workplace romance, which usually surprises me because I'm not usually a workplace romance, but this one kind of snuck in there as being my favorite book in February. So I don't know if it had been in another month, it probably wouldn't have been my favorite, but for February, this one is it. And for March, that is when I started my Elsie Silver binging and I started with Flawless in March and that made the top for me there. So I don't even, I don't even have words. If you don't know how much I love the Chestnut Spring series and Elsie Silver, I will put a playlist in the corner where I rank all of the Chestnut Spring series, all five books in the series. Um, book number one is what I read in March, and so that has made it into my top. I'm trying to decide. I think I'm gonna mark, I think I'm going to narrow it. Um, I don't wanna confuse you all by naming all 12 videos, 12 books at once, so I'm just gonna tell you the top from those ones. Now, I haven't picked my top yet. So I'm going to be deciding on the spot with you guys as you watch. And I'm thinking, looking at these three now, see, and in my head, I'm getting in my head because I really want to say Elsie Silver and I really want to say Flawless, but it is not my favorite book in the series. But because the other books that I read ended up being in months where I read something better, then Flawless ended up being the only one that landed in my book bracket because Heartless is my top book, as you know, if you read my, watch my video, but it came, I read it in April and there was something in April that I read that I loved even more than Heartless, if that's possible. So yeah, so part of me wants to say Flawless is the top for this book bracket purely because of my love for Elsie Silver, but I actually think I'm gonna give it to X's and O's. Um, it's a sleeper hit. I don't think a lot of people have read it, which is a mistake. You should read it if you haven't. Book three in her Influencer series is coming out in January and I need to read it now. Um, and she also has a first book called Set On You, something like that. And it is about a fitness in fitness um, in influencer. And yeah, I love this series. So yes top first my first quarter top tier book x's and o's x's and o's by amy leah now let's get into the second bracket so those would be for april may and june my top book in april would have been heartless except abby jimenez came out with yours truly and this is like this is pers me personified in a book the male main character has anxiety and the way he handles life and just those little nitpicky things, I have never felt more seen in a book as an introverted 
person with anxiety than when I read this book. So it is 100% my top read for April. Um, I, I love it. I love Abby Jimenez. Um, technically this comes after, I don't know if she classifies it as a series, but it follows part of your world, which is also interconnected to her very first series. Um, I think the series is called the friend zone, but she has three books in that series. I love Abby Jimenez. Um, if you want, I can do a ranking of all my favorite Abby Jimenez books. Um, leave them out in the comments below. If you want to see that, I can definitely do that. But if you haven't read yours truly, you don't need to read part of your world to read yours truly but it helps because the characters from part of your world are in yours truly. Um, but you definitely need to check out yours truly and Abby Jimenez if you haven't already. So that's April. May is Sarah Adams and that is Practice Makes Perfect. And now I love Sarah Adams and I thought her first book in this series, When in Rome, was really good last year. And then Practice Makes Perfect come out and I loved it. I loved the characters. I loved the cuteness, the interaction, the banter, the fake dating, the romance education. I loved everything about this book. The tattoos, I loved it. So yes, top book for me for May was Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. And June, um, I read it in June, however, it didn't release until July and that is Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. And, um, I really enjoy Catherine Center's books. This one I got because I had read other books by her and I enjoyed them. And so I got the um, arc from NetGalley and I loved this book. I was not expecting to love it as much as I do. And it 100% surprised me. So if you haven't read Hello Set Stranger, then please do. It has a slight twist at the end. I've heard that other people saw it coming. I didn't, which is odd for me. Normally I can predict a twist or pretty early on in the book, but for some reason I thought go went into this whole thing not not getting it. I just I just didn't. So that to me made it a really good read for me. So my top four April, May, June for quarter two, I have to give it to Abby Jimenez. It has to be yours truly. This book is anxiety representation personified and I love it and I love the characters and I love everything about it. I will, I am waiting long enough that I can forget enough of it so that it's like reading it again for the first time. I can't wait. I'm probably going to reread it next year. Um, if she has, she has another book that's coming out. I don't know if it's tied to any of her previous books, but I might just have to reread yours truly anyway. I try not to reread too much because there are so many amazing romance novels that a, are on my TBR, um, B, are get releasing next year. I try not to reread too much. In fact, in 2023, I only had two rereads and one was Catherine Center's The Bodyguard. And the only reason I reread it was because I, um, I did a book annotating and I wanted to annotate a book that I had already read. Oh, I lied. I actually did three. Um, the third one, the second one was, um, Fourth Wing, I originally read the book and then I went back a few months later before Iron Flame came out and I listened to the audiobook and I don't regret that decision. I am, a, if, if I am going to read Romanticy, it has to be on audiobook. Um, so yeah, if you want to know why that is, you can check out my um, video about me becoming a Romanticy girly. Um, I'll link it up in the corner and you can check that one out. And the only other one I reread was The Legacy by um, L. Kennedy. And that's because I hadn't read the L. Kennedy's Briar U series for a while. And she had her new book, um, The Graham Effect, which takes place, it's about the first character, the first couple from the um, Briar U series, their daughter. And I just kind of wanted to remember where they left off. And The Legacy is actually like um, a short story compilation of happily ever afters for the four couples from Briar U. So I didn't reread the whole Briar U series. I only reread The Legacy before Graham Effect came out. So those were my only three rereads last year. But Back on to the point of this video, I might reread yours truly next year um, once it has been a year since I read it so that I can like dive into it fresh and like re-experience it again for myself because I loved it. So bracket one, we have X's and O's by Abby, no, by Amy Leah and book for bracket for quarter two, we have yours truly by Abby Jimenez. So 
quarter three. So this would be July, August, and September. My July book is Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. And I loved this book. It is a, it's not really a surprise pregnancy. I call it accidental pregnancy. And you find that out right at the very beginning. The entire, most of the book takes place over her pregnancy and then the baby's being, after the baby's born. I loved it. This book personifies how an accidental pregnancy needs to be handled. I also have a video on my favorite accidental pregnancy books because weirdly enough, even though most people hate this trope, it is a favorite of mine. So I will link that up in the corner so you can check out that video too. But yes, Out on a Limb, Hannah Bonham Young is the top tier for me for July. August is a book called Accidentally Amy by Lynn Painter. Um, I've read a lot of Lynn Painter before, mostly her YA books a while ago, um, but she does write some contemporary fiction. This one, I honestly hadn't even heard of. I found it while I was scrolling through Overdrive looking for audiobooks to download one week, and I saw it and I put a hold on it. And it is a workplace romance and it's about a girl who pretends to be somebody else because she's running late and um, her coffee drink gets called but with a different name. And so rather than waiting for hers after Amy's coffee doesn't get picked up for a few, she takes it and ends up running into this really hot guy who turns out to be her new boss. And now I thought that there was gonna be like a mistaken identity was gonna last for a while, but it doesn't. Like as soon as they get to the office and the PR person comes in, he finds out that she's not really Amy, but the story takes off from there. And even though workplace romances are one of my bottom tier tropes for me, I really, really enjoyed this book. It was a sleeper thing. I had no knowledge of it going into it, but if you haven't read it yet and you have read, enjoyed Lynn Painter or you like her type of books, definitely give this one a try. I really enjoyed it. And September is Some Kind of Blunderful by Livy Hart. Uh, this one probably didn't release till October because I'm pretty sure I read this one as an e-arc in September from NetGalley. And Livy Hart is one of my new auto read authors. I read two of her books last year and I am obsessed. I'm going back and reading. She has a few I think that I haven't read yet. And she also has one coming out next year, I believe. She's an auto read for me now, 100%. And this one is no exception. They are like slight rivals, but I I would more say instead of or like it wouldn't say enemies I'd more say like rivals or dislike to wrote lovers um it was cute the banter was great I loved it like I just I really loved it now what is my top of those three I think I'm gonna have to give it to out on a limb by Hannah Bonham Young just because accidental surprise pregnancies are one of my favorite tropes they didn't used to be I don't know I'm assuming it's the mom thing in me that now that I'm a mom, surprise, like babies in books just like makes me giddy and happy. And I get it that that, I get that that's not everybody's cup of tea, especially in a romance. But if you're okay with it, check this book out. This is definitely bracket three for me. And then bracket quarter four is going to be October, November, December. October, Wildfire by Hannah Grace. I am going to say this now, I didn't hugely like Icebreaker. I just didn't. I didn't find either of the leads all that appealing in Icebreaker. I found it really long, really tedious to read. So I was did not have huge hopes for um, Wildfire, but um, it was set in a camp and I love when adults go to summer camp. It's I didn't get to go to summer camp as a kid. So it's also one of those things that like when I get to read about adults experiencing summer camp, it makes me happy inside. So I decided to give it a try. Um, I listened to the audiobook. Do not regret it. It was a five star immediate read for me. I loved it. I loved their interactions. I loved their chemistry. I loved the will they, won't they the whole time they were at camp because they were, it was like, it was forks proximity, but because they were both camp counselors, they weren't supposed to date, but then they started sneaking around on the side anyway. And yeah, I loved it. I loved it a hundred percent if you haven't read it. And if you read Icebreaker and you're like me, you couldn't get into it, try Wildfire anyway, trust me. November is another e-arc for me. Um, it re I read it in November, it released in December, and that is Second Chances in Newport Stevens by TJ Alexander. This one is a um, about a trans male and his boy um, and second chance romance from his boyfriend from high school, who is also coming into himself, questioning his sexuality after his marriage has broken up. He has the cutest daughter. I think she's 11. She is freaking adorable. 
I and hit plus I was afraid that his ex-wife was gonna be like the villain in this and she 100% wasn't like their relationship it was amicable they are they are like epitome co-parenting friends and I love it her mother however like she needs to work on her shit but like the ex-wife I loved her her and the daughter is how everybody should act like it just is um and i loved their story i loved their rekindling um i was so happy that i got this one as an e-arc i love tj alexander i read everything that they write almost immediately if you haven't read anything by tj alexander please 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 do they also have um a couple books about chefs um i can't remember what they're called but they, they're awesome. Um, I love every book that they write. So I'm gonna keep reading everything that they write, 100%. And December is Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. Now I am late to this game. This book came out way earlier in the year and I am not a huge small town cowboy romance. I know that this is coming from me, the girl who just admitted how much she loved the Chestnut Springs series and how much she loved um, Elsie Silver and everything. But until those, I was not a huge, it just wasn't my genre. I grew up in a small town. I live in Alberta. We have the whole, trust me, if cowboys were like these authors wrote, write them, that would be great. I live in a place where these boys live. And unfortunately they are not all like her cowboys and her boys from her small towns, unfortunately. But she, I don't know where she, I don't know where these authors find their boys, but we need to have more of them in the world. And I read Done and Dusted. It is a brother's best friend, which is a good trope, one of my favorite tropes. I was so happy that I read this book. I cannot wait for her book two to come out. I have, have a NetGalley request for it, but it hasn't been approved yet. I don't know if it will before it releases, but fingers crossed. Um, yeah, so Done and Dusted, that's December's. So October, November, December, Wildfire, Second Chances, Done and Dusted. I think I'm gonna go with Done and Dusted. Um, I loved it, it was a quick read, it was not long, it was easy. I could have done it, if I was reading the physical book, I probably could have done it in one day. I did a day and a half because I listened to the audiobook at work. I didn't even, I had no complaints about this book. Like I couldn't find anything wrong with this book and I cannot wait to dive back into the series. So for quarter three, we had Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young and Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. So let's come back to quarters one and two and pick which one was the best. So to remind you, quarter one, X's and O's by Amy Leah and quarter two was Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. And without a doubt, it is going to Abby Jimenez. This book, this book is my life. I cannot reiterate how much I need you to read this book if you haven't. If you don't have anxiety, but you have somebody in your life who does, read this book so you can get in their head and understand them. Like, I know I'm talking about this book a lot. I really do, I, I understand. But there is a scene where the character with anxiety is the male. He has to research the restaurant before he goes so he knows what's on the menu and he Google maps the parking lot so he knows what the parking situation is like. When she finds this out, does she make fun of him? Does she, no. She makes it easier for him. She's, I think she had been there before, so she messaged him and she's like, this is what the situation is. So he could go into this new situation already feeling comfortable. Like, I love it. Okay, yours truly is the first half of the year's win. Second half of the year, we had Out on a Limb and Done and Dusted. This one is, I'm gonna give it to Out on a Limb. I love Hannah Bonham Young. She also has quickly become an auto read, if not auto buy author for me. Um, and I think that the accidental pregnancy in this one is going to trump the brother's best friend from Done and Dusted. So yeah, I feel confident in Out on a Limb. Yes. Now, grudge match. Battle Royale, Abby Jimenez, yours truly in one corner, Hannah Bonham Young's out on a limb in the other corner. It's gonna go to Abby Jimenez. I mean, I've already been, tro I've already, I've already spouted the virtues of this book. I have, I can't spout them anymore or you're gonna stop watching this video if you haven't already. But 100%, this was my favorite book of the year. I will continue to read everything Abby Jimenez writes. I think I have the book. It's right here, I do. This, 
this is it. This is, this is my favorite book of 2023, my favorite romance. I have no regrets. There are other books I loved. They have a lot of five-star reads. I will go over some of them when I do my full 2023 reading wrap-up with you guys, which I will post um, sometime at the beginning of January. This is my favorite book. I have no regrets. My only regret is that the cover is ripped. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, what was your favorite book? of 2023. Was it this one? Have you read this one? You should read this one. No, seriously. What was your favorite romance book? Did I list it? Cause I maybe, did I read it? I don't know. Put your comments below. Let me know what your favorite was and I will hundred percent comment you back and let you know if I read it or if I'm adding it to my TBR. So yeah. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please click that like button and subscribe. I post daily romance book review shorts, as well as I try to post fun little videos like this um, at least once a week. So yeah, please come and join the party and talk about romance books with me. Have a good day. Bye.